this is it. This is the Blue Crab American Rules Croquet Tournament held in October of 2021 and put on by the Chesapeake Bay Croquet Club in Hartfield, Virginia at the facility built by Macy White, the fellow sitting in the golf cart there who's also the tournament director. Steve Thurston, the president of the club, is the tournament manager. This is a semifinal game between Rodney Lassiter, third from the left, at a handicap of minus 0.5, and his nephew, Adam Lassiter, on the far left, at a handicap of minus 1. Thus, the Lassiter family smackdown. Corner one's a little unusual at this level. Makes you vulnerable to attack. Unless, of course, you plan to do that. It wasn't really a drag roll, but he was hoping that yellow would go in the jaws. If you think there's any chance the opponent's going to go around before yellow gets another turn, it's better to put yellow a little off the approach line to the hoop so he can't knock it out of the way when he makes two back. It doesn't happen very often, but if you want to see it in action, look at the doubles match from the U.S. Rules Nationals at the NCC between uh, Sharif, Sandy, Matthew, and Steven. It's pretty cool. Based on how hard he hit that, I'm pretty sure he was trying to cut it toward hoop three. No, deadness is incurred, but the disadvantage of doing that is you leave the spent ball out on the lawn.
perfect rush for red to get over to black. So blue has to take on the partner deadness and move black. And if he meant to cut black that way, that was a Reg Bamford level shot. General rule, hit first the ball you want to leave behind. Whether it's a takeoff to the attack or a rush to the attack. I can't tell whether he's trying to set up here or get out, but he left blue far enough off the boundary that it'll be useful to him later. This is a very old school versus new school kind of game. I had a lovely chat about this with Rodney on the phone. He said that Adam started at about age 25, more or less under his uncle's tutelage. But Adam has a very modern swing. Hands together, top of the shaft, produces a lovely pendulum motion. You'll notice he uses Reg Bamford's standard grip with his thumb on top and Robert Fulford's flowing casting motion. He didn't learn any of that from Rodney. Nice morning, man, Brian. It is. The Brian he's talking to is Brian Hovis, your videographer, who finished fifth out of 14 in championship flight. And so, fortunately for us, was available to film the semifinal and the final. Blues three ball dead, so puts it in position and then goes to the boundary to guard yellow's shot on that blue ball. I don't know if Rodney ever played hockey, but that split grip that he uses is popular amongst former hockey players. I thought that was going on. <laughs> Do hell to that. If this were later in the game, and clearly if he were behind, he would be attacking now. Rodney holds that position for 9 to 13 seconds on every significant shot so later in the video if it looks a lot shorter it's because I edited that out
doesn't like the hoop shot with black so close so he's gonna try for the wire and give yellow the rush instead questionable shot. You know one then where you hit like fifty percent of the time. On that side of no different. But that's gives him a shot there. And if he hits, might be over. And Rodney dodged a bullet. Could have considered peeling red here. And blue's far enough from black that it might have been a chance worth taking because he ended up leaving both balls sitting there anyway. He keeps that up, he's going to be hard to beat. for three. This drive shot approach to that hoop is one of the hallmarks of an elite player. I see, I see what you do on that. That on-court board is wrong. Black is not dead on red. But because the players are assuming that this is the state of the game, we'll make black provisionally dead on red by pinking out the background behind it.
yellow and red are both for two, but their partner did. So he needs to get the spent ball black up to red to get something going. So yellow goes three ball dead, setting a three ball break for partner red. With the danger of ball blue a long way from black, the only ball that's live on. Looks like Adam might be checking for the wire of blue on black, but even if he had it, he wouldn't take it. All he'd be able to do if he made that long shot is break up the three ball break, but he ended up three ball dead, a long way from his own hoop and next to no chance of setting black a rush on yellow to its hoop. You should always check for a wire at the beginning of your turn, but you don't always have to take the lift. I haven't played at Macy's facility yet, but from the looks of this, I can't wait to get there. If you look at the um, video of the final match in singles, it's the camera's on the other side of the court. You'll get to see a different perspective and get the whole picture. And again, this only makes sense because their board shows black is dead on red, which it's not. And at the risk of being a little too pedantic, it's important to remember that the board is just an aid. If Rodney had realized before he put red there that black was probably not dead on red, he could have called an official timeout, corrected the situation, and then put red someplace else. After the shot, one can claim a replay based on misinformation, but the incorrect board only counts as misinformation if it's previously been verified by the opponent as correct. Other referee opinions are invited, but I would say that Adam could now realize that black was in fact clean on red, get the board corrected and shoot at red, and Rodney would have no recourse because he had never had the board verified before he put red there. Most of the time, the player black in that situation would allow red to be replayed. But if the game is close and important, there's no obligation to do that. It's just as important to note that any time a player notices that the board or the clip positions are wrong, 
they are obliged to announce that fact immediately and not wait until it's tactically advantageous to do so. Rodney's, I think, self-taught swing exhibits a couple of common components. Hands apart, lots of stop shot action with no follow through. But in his hands, it's pretty darn accurate. Lou, of course, was opponent dead before he did that. Lovely drive shot approach to an odd numbered hoop. Means you don't have to baby the hoop to get an easy shot on the reception ball and it increases your chances of getting a rush to your next when you're making an odd numbered hoop. That would have been useful there actually. He'll probably try to keep going just to get clean, but now he's thinking about the lead, putting Black in position for his hoop.
He's kicking himself for that, but pretty good result. He started at four, ended up at two back. He is three ball dead, but he's right in front of his hoop. Rodney takes the one back clearance for yellow. And red is a long way away. He did leave yellow quite the opportunity, but those two may form a double target for black after it makes its hoop four. And now the boards are back in agreement. Blue may be wired from everything, but it's three ball dead, so it doesn't matter. He did it again. Hoping to get to yellow through the hoop. He's going to prioritize joining up over shooting at black and setting a leave for red. Maybe so that he has a better chance of keeping blue three ball dead than if he had shot it black and missed. Waiting to set up a better rush and guarding black shot on yellow.
two ball breaks are worth practicing. So should he make one back and let Blue Glick clean? He's down by two. Probably should because he has a good pioneer at two back. He can go to peg from here. His real challenge, of course, will be digging black out of corner four because black is the ball that yellow needs. And now we're tied. So red goes from hoop four to three back, gives blue the one back clearance, and sets a rush to hoop three for yellow, hoping that black misses. And by the proverbial coat of paint, he does miss. A more aggressive approach would have been to take off for his hoop, leaving red there and getting his three ball break going, but he didn't want to leave blue an easy shot on red if he failed to make the hoop.
Who needs a pioneer? Since I have the advantage of unlimited replays, I can certify that yellow is only dead on red. Somewhere in here, though, Adam suggests that yellow is dead on blue, and Rodney agreed with him. Therefore, neither player can now use the incorrect board as the basis for a claim of replay based on misinformation. But once again, because they're using the top board as the state of the game, I'll make the yellow ball provisionally dead on blue to reflect that. He has a double target here, but he's gonna try to hit just black because he thinks he's dead on blue. Black is for six, so all you have to do is give him a pioneer. You're only allowed to hit that stroke if your handicap is less than zero. Bob and Ted's teaching materials discourage rushing pioneers rather than placing them with croquet shots. To facilitate that, when you make six and have to change directions going back to two back, convention places the pioneer for one back two to four yards south of one back. So that a nice little split stop shot will place the two back pioneer and position for the rush on the one back pioneer. Yellow could have been right about where black is now. Because his yellow pioneer is so good, though, rushing to two back and then taking off back to one back works just fine. Red and yellow are partner dead, but with a nice three ball break set up, he's not about to pass up this opportunity just to avoid giving them a one back clearance. Lovely death roll to start a quadruple peel on opponent in AC for Matthew or Sharif maybe, but in this game, that's an unforced error. Yellow was supposed to be over by three back. Now, unless he gets a rush on blue back toward yellow out of two back, he's gonna have trouble making more than another hoop or two.
Here comes the Matthew Essex maneuver. Hampered shot, no problem. Just take a 15 yarder instead. So black goes from six to four back. Red gets the one back clearance and blue and black are pretty much in command. Heavyweight prize fighters going to their corners for round seven. This is so common. You hit it hard because you're trying to cut it. And you hit it center ball instead and knock it way off course. And now down by seven hoops. And Yellow's sitting out there like that. He has no choice but to attack. But he's playing as though Yellow is dead on blue and red. So this is going to be tricky. So because yellow is functionally dead on blue and red, he can't set a leave for yellow. This is pretty awkward position for red and yellow right now. Nice double target for black. Should make it easy to get a rush on yellow to four back. Okay, he's up by six. Black is the only ball that yellow was live on. Yellow has a pioneer at four in red, which is three ball dead. There is no hoop shot that can't be messed up. So let's not give this game away. Let's go back to blue, which is clean and for two back so that red will serve as a pioneer for a three ball break for blue as well. I think the yellow ball kept him from putting black on the proper side of blue. And now with yellow in such good position, 
Blue can't afford to just take off to two back and leave black out there because yellow might get down to red and we get a three ball break going. And this is even worse because now blue can't rush red back to two back because he's hampered by black. And I'm going to get at least three comments telling me that this shot was a fault because black didn't move. That was a continuation shot, not a croquet shot. Had black moved, it would have been a dead ball fault. Red is the only ball that black is live on, so he can break this up and, in fact, send red to blue and get something going at two back. Instead, he gets a dead ball fault out of it, and now black has to go back to four in pioneer position for yellow after it makes three. This could be a game-losing mistake. So, Rodney's down by six. Yellow needs to get through two back to tie. And if he gets that far, he's probably going to peg. And I'm guessing that if he gets an extended break going, he'll be first ball in last turn. He's still down by three. Black is dead on yellow. Go for it. Might have been better off to put black in pivot position while he got that rush rather than leaving it back here.
And now the rules situation that ended the game. Nothing wrong with that. But watch very carefully. And in case you missed it, here it is again. He doesn't pick up the striker ball. He picks up the object ball. That's misplaced position. Started his turn with yellow. And now he's playing red. Yes, he switched striker balls in the middle of his turn, but since he did it from a misplaced position, it's not a wrong ball fault. Misplaced position takes precedence. When they figure it out, they should just put him back, correct a misplaced position, and he gets to play yellow. It's about here that they realize that Rodney has switched balls. He told Macy, the referee, that he had picked up yellow and put it next to red before he struck red. So the correct call of a wrong ball fault was made. The balls were put back and Rodney's turn ended. In fact, it was a misplaced position error, which would have allowed him to continue his turn after restoring the balls to the proper position. He was only down by a hoop. He had a good pioneer at his next, and he was probably first ball in the last turn. The outcome might have been different. In our phone call, I told Rodney about this before posting it, and he said, I don't care. You hit a wrong ball. You deserve to lose. And while Macy and Rick Sheely talk about it, you can see that correcting misplacement of balls is number two on the list of proper interventions that should be made because no penalty is involved. Blue could just get out of bounds here. He's up by one. Yellow's first and last, and red is three ball dead. So this is basically target practice because it makes no difference what he does. Now, a reason to do this in block play would be to increase your net hoop score and improve your position in the knockout. But this is a semifinal game, so that's irrelevant. Now, if blue is first and last turns, then yellow gets another shot and has a shot on its hoop and it's only down by one. There's no way Adam would have made that mistake. So he just doesn't want to stop playing, that's all. And that's a dead ball fault because blue was partner dead when it started this turn. You cannot intervene on a dead ball fault because the penalty for that is end of turn. The opponent has to recognize it, that even if he had, and they had called it, Red's three ball dead, so he could not have taken advantage of it. That's why I concluded that Adam had taken the one back clearance for Black. So the younger Lassiter with the beautiful swing takes the family smack down from his old school uncle in a game that was really very close, featured fabulous break play and a few interesting rules snafus. Adam went on to play the final against Rick Sheely. Give us a like and subscribe and you'll get notified when it gets posted.